Oscars. Hold on. Hello, Howdy Disco Citizens. I am Julia Marchesi. And I'm Terry Gamble. And welcome to Horror X. Yeah! This is a collaboration between the George A. Romero Foundation, Waha, and our podcast, Horror Movie Survival Guide. Yes, Horror X explores the femmes who help make frights and films fantastical and palavers with them about their experiences in film and horror. So today's guest has been a hardcore horror hound for a long time and shows her love for the genre daily as the digital editor Fangoria.com <gasps> The holy grail you mean Julia of Fangoria the, the destination where all the cool people in horror go yes <laughs> um, we are so excited we get to chat with the amazing angel um, we got to chat with her last year when we were on the red carpet <gasps> Oh my gosh, that was amazing for the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards where she was interviewing the presenters including us <laughs> So we know she has a million, a million amazing stories. We are so excited to talk to her. Welcome to the amazing Angel Melanson. Yay! Hi. Yay! Yay. Hello. 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 <laughs> I don't know why. why it's always the double wave. Like I don't wave like that ever in real life, but I pop onto a screen and I'm like, ah. Like I'm not much of a thumbs up girl, but somehow when you're, you know, the 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 mannerisms change when you get on video. It's weird. It's video it? video chat speak, right? It's a right. whole language that we all got into during the pandemic. Me doing extra extra work now. You you're voguing <laughs> though. That's way cooler than the whatever. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for having me. We're so honored to have you. I mean, anyone who says that they're a horror fan, a woman, a Latina, an LGBTQ, a holy trifecta of underrepresentation, quote from Angel's interview. From um, Shout out LA. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, we were like, yep, yep. Want to hear more. All of that. We're all all in this, this cool, cool boat. Yeah. Of underrepresentation, and we want more. So that's partly why we're here doing this show anyway. And um, so excited to have you. So Tell us, where did it begin for you? When did you fall in love with horror? I got to lay down on the couch for this one and just stare up at okay. the ceiling as I just wax poetic on it. <laughs> <laughs> I have two Therapy kind of like horror origin stories. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is the earliest, I think. There's one that my mom really loves to tell, and I was too young to remember it. So that's probably my very first introduction. And it has to do, it begins with a trip to Universal Studios Hollywood. <laughs> we're right. on a family trip there. I was I was quite little. Like I said, I do not remember this. Um, but we were waiting for the studio tram tour to take off. So we're filed in in our seats. I'm seated at the edge, like the furthest most edge. So I've got a little window thingy here. And apparently, the way my mom tells it, Frankenstein's monster comes up and is standing like next to me. And I'm looking in this direction, not paying attention. So then I gradually turn my head and when I see him, I lose my shit, like probably actually shit my pants because I was probably in <laughs> diapers at the time. But <laughs> And then she says, and then she very specifically describes it. And then, then it was so fucking weird because you just started giggling. And I think we can all kind of relate to that, like that fear, that anxiety that builds up and then that release. And then it's like this giddy little nervous kind of laugh. And we've all been chasing that feeling ever since, I think. So I'm yep, going to say yeah. that is my absolute horror origin story. <laughs> I feel like that's the reason I go to see horror movies in an audience, in the theaters mm -hmm. particularly, right? And it's 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 the joy, the noise of joyous disgust is my favorite noise. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite noise. But my second favorite noise is the, the noise of fear and then the laughter after. And, that, yes. and I feel like that's a very common kind of audience reaction. It's so beautiful. 100%. Delicious. We just went to see a screening of Pink Flamingos at Vidiots recently <laughs> and to hear people in that film and then walk out. And they're the, 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 uh, look like they had been hit by a truck, uh, you know, look at the end. Like, what did we just watch? <laughs> yes. 
still hits. <laughs> gorgeous. Still hits hard. We're like, wow, 50 years later, dude, uh, these are still great. That's um, what we call cinematic magic. Those rare moments when that happens, it's like, oof, we're, we're all chasing that. Any any film yeah. fan, regardless of genre, we are all chasing that feeling. And it's rare, but we can still find it like in these little pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are okay. your, yeah. So you said you had another one, right? You said- What's your other one? What's, What's your other, other formative one? horror? Oh, this one is this, I, I, I have to like give my dad shit for this one, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to watch rated R horror films as a child. You know, t that's terrible parenting on my parents' part. But I was very into like, I could watch anything that was on TV was deemed safe, right? Okay. So the It miniseries was coming out. I saw, I was very invested in this. I was like, I got to watch this. I was yeah. way too young to be watching it. Convince my parents it's on TV. It's it's safe. It's okay for me to watch this thing. Totally. <laughs> so <laughs> part one, again, scared the absolute shit out of me, but I was like, I was hooked. So I still had part two to get through. I was too scared to go downstairs. One of my chores was like taking the laundry, like downstairs into the laundry room, throw it in the hamper. I was too fucking scared to go down the stairs. And my mom is like, look, if you're too scared to do this and you can't just like exist and go about your daily life, then that shows me you're not able to handle this just yet. And I'm like, well, lady, I got part two. There, what do you yeah. mean? This is not, there's no question. I gotta be, I gotta be tuned in for this. So I was like, okay, fine. Gathered up the laundry, ran my ass down the stairs, threw that shit in there. I didn't even do it properly. I was gonna get in trouble Aww. anyway. So I threw it in there, turned around, came to run back up the stairs, and there's a clown waiting for me. Full on <gasps> the wig, the nose, <laughs> everything. It was my dad who somehow went and very quickly rummaged through his shit and found his clown wig and clown nose and was standing Oh, he just there. had it lying around your thing? He was very casual. Oh, dad. Okay, My dad is also a big more than that. We have <laughs> to get gonna, back to that in a second, but we're going to take word. it. <laughs> so I like did that, like my kind of Scooby-Doo reaction when I get very scared like that is like a pause, like feet are planted firmly, right? And then the, mm -hmm. the fear shakes up uh -huh. and then there's movement and then the feet oh. kind of go, and then you take off. So I did that, ran up the stairs screaming. My mom pops up at the top of the stairs and is like, what is happening? And I just scream and jump onto her. And then she sees my dad behind me walking up the stairs laughing, still in his clown wig and clown nose. But Wow. <laughs> that is dad. pure evil, but also brilliant. And why did he have a clown outfit, A, and then just if you're willing to share and B, like... <laughs> Wow, that's please hardcore. don't make me publicly talk about my parents' kinks on on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Oops. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hi. I'm, no, kidding. I'm kidding. My dad is a. <laughs> we kind of got a clown thing over here that we discuss sometimes on some of our episodes oh, because. No. My biggest fear as a child was clowns, but I got sent mm -hmm. home from like a birthday party when I was about five years old, like bawling my eyes out, even though I had dressed <laughs> like clowns before. I had this love hate with them as well too. Mm -hmm. I think it's that whole fear thing, right? And so we tackled a whole bunch of clown movies mm -hmm. on one of our rounds, um, you know, on our podcast. And you know, I got over it, and now I'm kind of obsessed. And now <laughs> Julia likes to send me sexy clown core things, and I'm like, all right, clown core's back. We're I in. Love you know, <laughs> people just dressing like that out in the open. I'm like, yeah, the world is on fire, and we're all clowns now. So I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> but, I mean, Stephen King is. I'm a huge Stephen King mm -hmm. fanatic, and 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 I think it is very formative in a lot of our in our lives. Um, so did you you loved Pennywise you feared Pennywise and then where did it go from there was it something that you're like oh I need to dig in and need more oh it was always yeah Universal Monsters were a huge huge thing I was obsessed with that would rewatch them constantly because I was allowed to watch it uh yeah. Twilight Zone was huge for me as well but mm -hmm. it was so fucking cool because you have like Stephen King is so great of having like these child protagonists yes. and it's just like it's another layer of fear when you're a kid because you're like there's horrible things happening to children so that means mm -hmm. that's that's possible that's that's allowed like that's crazy that's how you know it's going hard sure. when a movie does that right <laughs> but, but also making the losers the hero exactly is, is, is kind of the charming uh aspect of that book of, of it's yes you know when you when you're obsessed with it as as we are you're like yes it is about a killer clown but it's really about yeah. friendship yeah. and this you know bonding and trying to explain that to people you know yeah. and then you look like the the charlie day meme with the thing <laughs> because of this, Red this thing. yeah i feel like that when on I a about very everything. regular basis <laughs> my dear friend here has read all of all of the king books every single one of them so we'll be watching like some random other thing and i'm like 
she's and she'll say some line and I'm like, oh, is this from one of the books? And she's like, yep, yep, it is. <laughs> it is. And so, and it's, or it's from an, an Easter egg from another one, you know, cause there's so much in that universe that mm -hmm. just inter, interlocks the whole dark tower thing. And like, yeah. Anyway, I, I love like that you have that deep me. knowledge of it. Yeah. Yeah. I about it, like I learned some things by hanging out with <laughs> yes. you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I have the, I have the dark tower cost symbol around my neck every single day. So it's like hardcore hardcore fanatic is with you always i love this this is amazing so yeah it is it is in my heart and in, on my chest um yeah. so when you when you decided like when you started loving horror when did it start becoming more than just passively watching movies because you started to be actively not over you start with cosplaying but you start with writing you start with you filming you i mean you, you've done everything <laughs> well as a kid i was very halloween was like the shit that was like our jam like obviously yeah. i think all of us relate to that I mean gay christmas yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh it all makes sense now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i grew up in las vegas and uh halloween falls on nevada day so we always got halloween off so what is it's nevada like day <laughs> nevada day so halloween it was always great because we had it off yeah, yeah so agreed what do you do for nevada day like how do you celebrate that you just don't go to school and you go to Halloween and you party. Oh. That's that's really all there is. Like because you had the Halloween parade and stuff the day before. Yeah. So you still got the Halloween celebration, but then just the day itself you had it off. That's so wild. Oh that's such a Vegas thing to do, I feel like too. <laughs> like yeah. party did you, day. Did you make your own costumes? I did. My dad uh is an artist, so we would kind of like I would pick my costume very early and then we would spend about like two months leading up to Halloween in the garage and he would like sculpt like masks and stuff. Wow. And we would, Building. Like, build it up scratch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about some of your favorite ones. Yeah. We were like little mad scientists in there. Um, sleep. Uh, the headless horseman was like my ultimate favorite. And I had never seen it done before. Like I'd never seen, now I've seen costumes of this and they're actually quite good, but I'd never mm -hmm. seen one, but I was obsessed with the legend of sleepy hollow. So I was like, all right, dad, this year, headless horseman, can we make this happen? And he did. I won second place at a costume contest at the mall. Why wasn't first? Why weren't you first? Who who did we get to fight? What happened? Yeah. It was two boys and they were pirates and they were like connected, like little suspender things. So it looked like they were on a pirate ship together. The judges went yeah, for cutesy rather or than whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's fine. I mean <laughs> not scary. It's not scary. I, I was like, it's Halloween, guys. Really? We're gonna go for the cutesy? Okay, fine, mm -hmm. that's fine. <laughs> Yes. So you, know, you you're you love making costumes. You love doing that. And so then did you learn to build yeah. from your dad? Were you because I know you were doing cosplay stuff for a while too, right? That's not really my skill set. I feel like my version of cosplay, I call it uh, it's like half ass cosplay or like what's what is my closet cosplay kind of okay. thing? Like I'm not really particularly adept at makeup or anything. I can just I, I if it's covered in blood, then I'm like You'll notice if you look at some of my pictures, it's like, oh, that's the cheat. If I can douse myself in blood, then that's the costume I'm going to do. Yeah, but that's what we love. We love being doused in blood. And that's like, honestly, <laughs> always the goal and the dream at all times. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, yes. it's very, it's like, it's, it's, it's a very sultry look. I feel like being doused in blood. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I, and this is a horror people know, right? You you watch a movie and then you they start getting bloody and you start going, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> Why? It's so weird. Brain broken. <laughs> Need the blood on top of the body <laughs> in order to enjoy. Okay. It's cool. just not doing it for me without the blood. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what to yeah. say. Can we? We're like, can they? They need more. Like, I was like, what did you do to me, Julia? Because, you know, I don't know if you know about our show how like julia has corrupted me like i was not a big horror head growing up like i've watched you know some scary things and participated but like not like to what i am now and now i'm just like oh not enough not enough <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna need more more, more, more <laughs> please yes yeah. Smash it. the horror hound has has now she is she is usurped she is on the thing <laughs> but like i, I want to know more about your path so yeah. you start out uh, just as a horror fan and mm -hmm. and move. how do you make it a career what'd you do what'd you do or were you doing hobby Shit. things before be what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> no i was as a kid i was always like, you know, laying on the bedroom floor, scribbling shit, making new, like, little short stories and things. And my mom would be like, oh, is that homework? And I was like, no. And, like, she couldn't fathom, like, what are you doing? I'm just writing a story. And she was just, like, just very supportive and very cool about it. But I think she was just like, what? Like, what the fuck is this kid's deal? Like, what are you doing? But she was awesome and let me just kind of do my thing. And I was very a voracious reader. I was very into reading. Goosebumps, of course, was like mm -hmm. gateway for all of us. Anything I can get my hands on at the Scholastic Book Fair that looked even <sighs> horror adjacent, you know, I would like scoop up all of that. But from a very early age, like that was kind of always like the, the passion. I made like a little 
Monster Squad. After I saw Monster Squad, I made like a little Aww. handwritten like kind of handbook of like how to kill monsters and made like a little Monster Squad at school and was like quizzing yeah, kids. I'm like, all right. <laughs> this is it. Did you make your friends like adhere to it? You're like, this is what we got to do. Yeah, I was like, all right, you guys need to learn these rules. Like, and I would quiz them. I don't know why anyone was still friends with me after that, but they were. I would. <laughs> Julia was, Julia's like, you're speaking yes. my love language. You would have yeah. made. Well, best we would have been Julia. best friends, but you only get you get like one of us in a school. You know what I mean? There's never like. Yeah, we, I know. There's, there's not pods of us chilling together in elementary school. We find or, each other in college. Like we that's do. what happens. Yes. <laughs> but when you're younger, it's like it's limited to one per school. Like yeah. Limited, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you're writing, and then when did you? I guess parlay that into like I don't know publishing or what? 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 What's next? The next step for you in that journey? Wanted to be a filmmaker, so kind of went to like film school. Was doing short, you know, shorts and things like that, and they always or, kind of accidentally veered into horror territory regardless of whether or not I started out with the story as a horror kind of thing in mind it always always veered into that they were like I like zombie musicals and things like nice. this and then <laughs> you made a zombie musical I would really like to see that you did, I made a trailer for a zombie musical that never got actually made using entirely the music of Queen for some reason that's what I chose <laughs> That sounds fantastic. <laughs> You're speaking too many things, too many good things that we love a lot at <laughs> one time. Maybe um, I need to revisit this. The singer of Queen uh, grew up in my hometown, and really we have a bunch of mutual friends, Mr. Adam Lambert. So I'm just going to put it out there and say his name on camera and be like, "Hey, let's let's connect you with Angel and let's like get this made. This let's do it." Happen. Because <laughs> um, Adam's like amazing on stage, like that's how I knew him is because he was a theater theater kid yeah. as well. Oh so, yes, yes, yes. That's incredible. Yeah, I think yeah. okay, we got to get this back in the works now. You know, I'll dust I'm it saying, off. And we got the George Romero Foundation. We're talking zombies. Like yeah, I think we got, we got enough uh, <laughs> enough enough people connected to make this maybe a reality. I don't know. Hell yes. I want to see that. Are you are you are you still going to make movies? Are you going to make more movies? That has been on the back burner for a long time now. Like I, my career path has gone like all these different directions. And now I have landed in this, like the dreamiest of dream scenarios. Like I you have every single fucking day. I'm like, how is this my life? This is insane. So I'm very happy doing what I'm doing <laughs> and championing other people's film projects. But I mean, maybe down the line, you know, just make a if, little something. Just if you, if, you if, if, if there was like no, uh, no limits, no budget, no anything, anything you wanted. What would you make? Uh, my zombie musical. <laughs> For us, uh, uh, horror and musicals are the favorite genres. So when you smush yes. them together, into, yes, it's the the creme de la creme. I was a musical theater kid, so this is very much Same. like my yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> You want to talk about some Sondheim? What do you want to talk about? Let's go. <laughs> we managed to talk about Sondheim in every episode of Horror Movie Survival Guide in some capacity, which is just. <laughs> too much but um okay. and our, our producer as well she's a grammy uh nominated she sang she sings in a group that is sondheim like stuff like that and that's how she got grammy nominated amazing that is <laughs> amazing with her group marking five sierra ride she's the best so it's just yeah it always comes it would, back to that always for come us. back around to sondheim it just is <laughs> yeah, for sure yeah so, so who, yeah how did you um hook up with fangoria how yeah. did tell us the dream that happened to you basically i just kind of was like you know what i really love this i just kind of had like that half-assed cosplay on social media i was going to conventions and meeting people and it was one of those things where i never had a big following by any means on any form of social media but for some reason it was the really fucking cool people that yeah. would like follow me and talk to me on there and i'm like i don't know why you would want to talk to me but this is awesome so just kind of meeting people at conventions meeting people at social media and then meeting them in person at conventions and then at a certain point i was like just make a podcast like maybe no one will listen to it except for my mom so i had like a, a horror blog horror girl problems yeah. and just mm -hmm. kind of did basically what i'm doing for fangoria on a much smaller scale and was just writing about horror and then interviewing people about horror game changer moment i did not know this was like a thing that existed like as far as like press lists i was just writing about stuff after the fact and then i got hip to like that press list was a thing that exists. We are, baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wait, you get what? Those screeners, you get those previews. Yes. <laughs> There's a whole yeah. new world that opened up when I learned about that. So shout out to Sean Redlitz. He was at Shutter at the time. I hit him up and just asked. I was like, you know what? 
I can just ask. The worst that's going to happen is they're going to ignore me or they're going to say no and I'll be in the exact, exact same place I am at this moment writing right. about shit after the fact. So I just hit him up and just asked and sent him my website. He put me on the press list and then suddenly I was getting like screeners. I was getting interview opportunities. And then outside of that, I would just hit hit up directors and things and people, writers of things I was a fan of and say, oh, would you want to come on this little podcast and just talk to me? And people would say yes. And every time it would baffle me. I'm like, I don't know why you're saying yes, but I'm so grateful that you're saying yes. And just kind of just doing that over and over and over again. And at some point, like Phil from Fango saw it and was like, oh, that thing that you're doing, would you like to come and host like a conversation for us? Obviously, I'm like, fuck yes, I would love to do that. Yeah. So did that for a little bit. Every once in a while, just pop in like, oh, I'll chat to some people and then pop mm -hmm. back out. And then at a certain point, they needed a new person to come in and run the website because the wonderful Meredith Borders was going to be leaving overseas and she needed a replacement. And they're like, hey, would you be interested in doing this full time? And I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Wow, they just straight out asked you. That is the dream. Well done. <laughs> I still had like baby. interview for it and I was like, there's no way. I was like, I'm just honored that you're thinking of me. And I was like, there is no possible way that I'm going to get this. And I was preparing myself for that. And I was like, but just think of like, how much closer you are that they're even like putting your name in the ring for this. Yeah. Like I was just, that was my win already. And then they offered me the job. That's amazing. And, and something, you know, I read the shout out LA interview you did. And another thing you said you thought was very important was don't be afraid to ask, mm -hmm. which is something I feel the same way, right? Like people don't know you need help unless you ask for help. Exactly. So I think going forward and just asking people to be on your show is kind of the way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Is to take charge and do it yourself and not, have to you know just wait around and hope that it'll happen that's what exactly. we do yeah yeah, it, 100%. It. yeah 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 i'm just like no validating right now reality, like, yeah. yeah no one's gonna come just randomly pick you up out of out of wherever and be like hey would you like to do this and this and this like you've kind of just got to do it on your own already and then maybe an opportunity will come where someone says hey the thing that you're already doing i know mm -hmm. that you do it would you like to do it in this capacity now yeah but mm -hmm. yep. it's not just going to just happen unless you're actually making it happen yourself. Absolutely. Well, it's it's wonderful to hear, you know, you sound so grateful. And so one, you know, and I feel like that's a, something that reads in what, everything you do. And I think that because the love is so genuine, you can really tell. And I think that that's what makes you so wonderful is that it's, you know, when you passion comes from passion, mm -hmm. you can see it. Oh, thank you. Your little face in awe when you're interviewing people. It's just so <laughs> cute. I love it. I just, it, I, that's what it is. I think you, you channel our energy too. I'm just like, yes, that's how I would be right now too. Like <laughs> she's geeking out. We're also geeking out. Like it's so fun. That's um, the other thing too. Mm -hmm. I feel like for so long I was like, would edit kind of myself a little bit and try mm -hmm. to be what I thought you were supposed to be like. Too and then cool. at a certain point, yeah, you know, never, I don't think I could ever pass for too cool. So it wasn't that, but it was like trying to be like more professional or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point I was like, nah, fuck it. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it on my terms. Like, and I was doing it on my own website and stuff. So I'm like, no one's going to fire me, you know? So I'm just like, yeah. I'm just going to be a nerd. I'm a nerd. And that's why I want to talk to you. And then at that point is when it actually started taking off when I stopped editing myself and I was just genuine nerd me. So... <laughs> what the people want. Um, <laughs> who are your favorite people that you've gotten to chat with or interview over the years with Fango? Who's like, I don't know, some highlights, I guess, if you will. There are so many. Like legit, this is not even like a cheesy thing. Like the fact that anyone takes the time to talk to me, I'm always grateful for the time yeah. I get to spend with these people. And it's just such a gift when I get to watch something, I'm a fan of it. And then I get to tell the filmmaker in person that I'm a fan of it and then talk yeah. to them about it. Like that will never not blow my mind. Um, but a bucket list one for me was definitely Elvira, Cassandra Peterson. Wow. I was like, I actually cried when I finished. I was going to say, did you cry, cry with? That's like, was yeah, going to be my 100%. next question if you weren't going to give me a good answer. I was like, <laughs> I know somebody made you cry. Like, like I know you them. cried. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Oh, my God. So Cassandra. Was it as Cassandra or as Elvira? How was she It was dressed? just Cassandra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we we're talking about her book. And she's just so <gasps> fucking cool. Like, everything that you wish that she would be. I like going into it. I was like, okay, you've been such a fan since you were literally a child. Nobody can live up to this expectation. So just yeah. temper that expectation right here before you even go into it. 
don't be disappointed or anything. And she just like busted through that and exceeded all expectations. It was the fucking coolest. (laughs) That's always the dream, like the meet your heroes thing. I know I've chatted Uh with friends all the time because we've lived in Hollywood a long time and we've met a lot of people and sometimes it's great and sometimes not so much. much. (laughs) But to hear that is just like, makes my heart burst open again to hearing you say that you have that experience with her because we got to live through you in that. And like, Mm -hmm. she's, she's everything. She's the blueprint. And that book is so heartfelt and beautiful. And her story is just pretty epic. So, oh, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Her story is so epic, even before she becomes Elvira. Yeah. Like the Elvira portion is not even the most interesting part of her life in that story. It's just the part that we're familiar with. Everything Mm -hmm. before that, I was like, this is five movies already yes. before you even become Elvira. Just the childhood portion alone is cinematic in its own yes. self. I was like, okay, this childhood, like, oh my God, this movie is like, it needs to be a mini series or something. Like, it's so yeah. good. Oh. Yes. You get some, some showgirl action going in there. Like, you go to that section. <laughs> All kinds of goodness. She's so fab. Yes. Um, anyone else that was like, anyone else bucket listy or anyone else that you loved? Uh, or that you who, cried over? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cried. <laughs> I think I cried over. I didn't get to interview him, unfortunately, but I did get to meet very briefly George A. Romero at a convention shortly before he passed, and I walked away from that crying for sure. <laughs> Please tell us everything. It, You're here because ever- that's usually our one of our final questions is about George. So we, I'm happy to chat anytime <laughs> about George in this. Interview. Oh my god. Okay. Yes. Tell yeah, us. it was just it was one of my first convention experiences of actually like. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay to stand in the line and do the thing and all of that. Like I was not familiar with any of that part at all. And I was like, holy shit, like he's here. Like I have to meet him, even if it's only for three seconds. Like I have yeah. to be able to do this. It's so, like I got a t-shirt and I'm like standing there, all like anxiety sweaty, you know, and I'm like, what do I say to this man? Like he's heard everything a million times. I'm like, but he's so sweet, he probably doesn't even care. And I'm like, I need him to know that he changed my life. Like Night of the Living Dead was like so formative scared the absolute shit out of me it still scares me like that movie will still scare me i need like a palate cleanser after watching it yep Mm -hmm. it just gets you to the fucking core and gets inside of you and just on so many different levels it's just so brilliant but i would like have all of this going on in my head like just like ding 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 ding. all Mm -hmm. these thoughts as i'm sitting there like okay i gotta meet him you're gonna have three seconds make it good make it count you know i don't even know what i said it (laughs) Did you black out? <laughs> I just blacked out. I sat down next to him. I said something probably like, hey, I'm going to change my life. And he, he was very sweet and smiled and like signed my shirt and like, wasn't even like, all right, get it, get the hell out of here. I think I was there for like longer than three seconds. I don't know what exactly we exchanged in those three seconds, but they were magical. <laughs> was he wearing the big glasses? He was. Yes, he was. And the I best? watched him cry. Oh, yeah. yeah, the best. <laughs> Can you remember the first the uniform, time? The I know. uniform. The uniform. Aww. Can you remember the first time you saw Night of the Living Dead? I was young. I was probably definitely elementary school, maybe like five, six ish. And I think oh, it was probably oh, wow. just caught it on TV. And I was just like glued to it. Like, what am I watching? And it was just horrifying. And just, it's always funny to me when people make that argument. Now, it's like, we go through these kind of periods where everything gets kind of very oversaturated by zombie horror. And then people get a little bit kind of like numb to it. And they want to be like, Oh, it's not scary because of this, or they're slow. And I'm like, the thing, the scary thing about this, first of all, (laughs) even taking the crazy humans out of it, because that that part is horrifying already. But I'm like, it's the sheer hopelessness of the situation. They keep multiplying. You can Mm -hmm. kill five, 10, 20, they're still fucking coming. They don't need to sleep. They don't need to rest. You do. You have limitations. They don't. Like it's yeah. it's an inevitability of it and the fucking yep. hopelessness of it that just like, even as a kid, I think I was like, I just understood that on some subconscious level. Like there's not really any outrunning these. There's It's nope. not like if they're going to get you, it's when. Yeah. And that was like the most dark shit ever to like a little six-year-old brain. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Terry knows if there's a zombie apocalypse that I'm taking myself out immediately. Like, I'm like, I'm not interested. I'm no. Julia's like, I'm in the horde, like, immediately. I was like, okay, I probably will see him fight a little bit, but I know that if if I have a gun or whatever, I'm gonna be like, okay, I love you. But she knows to not have to bother to come look for me, though. No, like, don't even worry about that. Like, that's just, <laughs> she's, 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 she's wow. noping out, noping out. Because uh, even if Julia's like, what? I belong to the zombies now. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fully, fully. I was just like, all right, like, we've obviously we've talked ad nauseum about. Like what we would do in the zombie apocalypse. Do you have your Do you have your plan? Do you know what you'll do? 
every plan I have is a shit plan because we live in LA. You're fucked. Like no way either out. way, you are fucked. And everyone's like, you go to Costco. I'm like, yeah, you and five million other people. Like it doesn't yeah. Yeah. it doesn't work. No, like, that terrifies me. I do have a best friend who works at Costco. And so I'm always like, get the stuff, grab the things, <laughs> yes. leave, you know, yes. like that's that's my in. Um uh, we have somebody in the chat who actually wanted to know what your favorite, um, some of your favorite all-time Fangorio covers are. Um, if you have like some favorite Fango covers. My number one favorite Fango cover is the Motel Hell cover. That one is, <laughs> that is a gem. <laughs> Motel Hell is so much fun. Uh, that yes. is so awesome. Is that it, kind of is a perfect description of like what I look for in a horror movie. Like it checks all of my boxes, basically. It's just fun and ridiculous and disgusting. Yeah, tell us about some more yeah. of your some more of your favorites. What are what are some more that you're into? Um, huge on Evil Dead, the okay. whole franchise. Yeah. Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, Army of Darkness. But I think Army of Darkness was my first rated R movie. I believe. Ooh. Yeah. Special in your heart, then. Okay, right here, right here. I, I have a, Groovy. I have a theory that um, <laughs> that Gaston from Beauty and the Beast is modeled after Bruce Campbell because you look at his face <sighs> and like the chiseled and oh, he sounds and he's like all, him, and he's really arrogant and everything. And I was like, I, I could see, see that. I, next rewatch of Beauty and the Beast, I'm going to be like <laughs> looking at it totally differently now. That's all you're going to see is <laughs> yeah. Bruce Campbell as gets on because it checks out. I know you're waiting for the Deadites. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what's your what do you think is the scariest movie that you have ever seen? Scariest movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Night of the Living Dead actually ranks very high on that because I think the age that I saw it, it I think it would be scary regardless, but I was at a perfect age that it horrified me but even as an adult and on rewatches there's so many different things that I find scary about it that that mm -hmm. one holds up for me as like one of the scariest movies probably of all time and then you've yeah, got I stuff agree. like you know Exorcist obviously is very mm -hmm. scary I don't really that's not like it's a great movie I don't rewatch it it's not one that I put on you know I don't watch it three times a month or something because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. religious just, war freaks me out I just got to program it. Um, uh, I was did some programming in Boston last Halloween, and I programmed The Exorcist. And it's a it's a college town, so there's a lot of people who had never seen it before. Ooh. People still walked out. Still, what? 2024, walking I'm out. I, I want to know exactly like the timestamps of when people walked it, out. It was it was with the cross, with the crucifix, yep, which yep, happened. Yep. It happens quite early in the film, yeah. and that's a good bar of judgment. People are just like, nope, don't want to see any more of that. Yeah, like, they just moved, walked yeah. right out of there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> we it is saw, very intense. Yeah, we just saw Saw the musical the other night um, in Hollywood, and uh, some people left. Some people left that too. It was it what? was too it was too intense yeah I feel like if you so. buy a ticket to sell the musical though you are you've already crossed a certain threshold right you've already like you would think but it was very it was also very gay the musical yes which oh. we we enjoyed quite a bit right <laughs> like we enjoyed quite a bit but okay. uh, you put two boys in a room you got to make them kiss it gets a little point. gay it's gonna get a little gay it just yes. we don't make the rules it just is <laughs> <laughs> and you get to watch, you know, somebody soft their foot off with bloody disgustingness. It's the kind of stuff that we love. Are you yeah. so are you a, a gore or gore hound? I don't know that I'm a gore hound. I would say more I, I appreciate practical effects. So it's not Agreed. necessarily I'm like, oh, the gory or the better. I'm like, I just mm -hmm. a solidly executed practical effect. I'm just like oh, every time. <laughs> No, agree. When yeah. you get a Savini or a Boutine or somebody okay. where you, it, it's magic and it's beautiful. And you're like, how did they do that? How you, someone had to create that. And it's yes. so gorgeous. So, and now you, Damien Leone, yes. like, you know, just having fun, like a creepy little kid growing up. Oh, you right know? down the vagina. Yeah. Yeah. Right down. <laughs> just right on down. But you know, it's, right I like that he, he's the director and the effects guy, right? So he can write the effects yes. into the script and then like make them happen. And I was like, that's very rare that happens. Yeah. I think, I think that's awesome. such a cool special thing because. Because I'm like, are you just kind of like, what kind of effect would I love to make? All right, now let's write around this, write around this, and write yeah, around yeah. this. Like, let's plug them in here. Now let's build around that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. Um, tell us about what you love about the horror community. What do I love about the horror community? I think mm -hmm. it's kind of like goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where I, I jokingly said, like, there's only one of us in every school. and We're all mm -hmm. kind of, you know, spread out. And Terry said, we find each other in college. But it does kind of feel like that. Like, mm -hmm. you, you kind of you get to a certain age and then you kind of realize, like, 
oh, there are people who like this. And I don't look at me like I'm insane when I'm like, oh, this was awesome because this and this and this and this. And you kind of see their eyes like glaze over or yep, they're yep. walking out of the room, you know, like <laughs> yep. we all know what that feels like. But when you find someone that you can talk to about it like this, that's just like, it's just such a great fucking validating feeling. And it's so fun to be able to talk about this and just riff back and forth on like, oh, and did you notice this? Or, oh, I like this because of this. And it's just like, bump, 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 bump. Yeah. So I think that's my favorite part is just kind of like, it's finding finding your people and mm -hmm. you kind of nerd out about this. And you get to learn stuff from that too. It's like, it's nice to like, I, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by so many knowledgeable, knowledgeable people like Phil, obviously, and just yeah. like, and like all of our writers and like people that can always like teach me something or tell me something that I didn't know or give me a different perspective on something. And like, I'm always seeking that out in every facet of my life, not just horror, mm -hmm. but I feel like horror community gives you the opportunity to be that as opposed to like, you know, I'm so sometimes talking to like a group of friends about horror stuff and it's like, they're not going to add anything to like something that I didn't know or like blow my mind. With they're not going to give you the extra backstories or the weird BTS. <laughs> yeah. and like, you know. No. <laughs> yeah. me, did you watch the documentary her film? You know what I mean? It's like, which goes into that. And they have another. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I knew I turned a corner when I had some of my besties were like, uh, I was like, oh, I don't get to talk to you guys about this anymore. Okay, thank you. Like, I get you it. That point. I just have yeah. to call Julia. Like, <laughs> but I feel like for me, everybody I've met in the horror community has been so um, almost surprisingly kind. And mm -hmm. I feel like because a lot of horror can look very spiky and, and scary right. on the outside. But then you look at the creators and they're almost always the most. Teddy bears. Yeah. The arts. Just really beautiful and really um, art nerds and this, <laughs> yes, right? yes. It's this. It's where you're like, oh, okay, you're just this nerd who happens to have gotten uh -huh. to do their their thing. And I think that's such a lovely thing to have such a beautiful community of people who want to help each other and are really excited to talk to each other. There's all like those studies as well that show like horror fans have more like empathy or something. And I'm like, I 100% believe that. Like that's yeah. part of the reason this stuff is scary because you're watching people go through these horrible situations and it makes you feel something. If it didn't make you feel anything and you're like, uh, I don't give a shit about these people, I'm dead inside, then we like, why, what's the point of watching the movie? It's not doing anything for you. So the right. fact that we come to this and watch it and it affects us, it's like, oh, because we care about what's happening to these people outside of ourselves. Yeah. We have empathy and fear. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also, I had a friend the other day who was like, oh, I don't like horror. Like she was talking to me about it. And I talked a little bit about your thing about, well, it's a safe way for people, especially if you've gone through trauma or anything like that as well, to kind of experience and find some sort of catharsis. And she was like, oh, like right. it never had occurred to her that that was why we were weirdos. Um, but it like <laughs> you kind just of like blew her I mind. Did. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like <laughs> she's like, no, that actually makes so much sense. Like that, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, yeah. You know, because I always um, say it's like a mm -hmm. for me, it feels like a roller coaster, right? Like you go yeah. on, you know, you have this very safe ride that you, at the end you're going to get a step off and I think it's going to be okay. But in the middle, you get to have this thrill ride. But also, Wes Craven, you know, famously said like horror movies don't create fear, they release fear. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a beautiful way to look at it as well. Mm -hmm. It's like this something that you have built up inside that can now be released and giggle sometimes at the end when exactly it does. That. Yep. Because it's a safe way to explore that. You're like, oh, I just got this like jolt of like, <gasps> And it's it does something physically to your body, that feeling. We all know that feeling of that that really well executed jump scare that just really gets you and it's just does something to you. Oh, and then that release of like, oh, you're actually safe and everything is fine. <laughs> and then yes. the movie, like, <laughs> yeah. Texas chainsaw, Julia hates me. I was giggling and I was just like, Yeah, she's still so mad. <laughs> that that's, that's one of my scariest movies as well. It's Still, my scare. This day. It yeah. I just think it's so camp. I'm sorry. It's I was like, camp. I did not know it was a family. Terrifying. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I, I we I went in and I was like, this is the scariest movie I've ever seen. And she laughed at it because other face was wearing a tie and makeup to dinner. And I was like, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, You're but that family me. is like so gay coded. It was like just so queer to me, the whole thing. And I was like, oh. This dressing is just well really is good weird... manners, okay? Like yeah, they, yeah. they show up, they dress for dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do. You bring your but corpse to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't smell a chain, like the gas of the chainsaw. I can't hear a chainsaw without involuntarily doing again the Scooby Doo run, where and I just uh, and I just take <laughs> off running, and it's so fucking embarrassing. I go to haunts and I like 
I, I like sometimes try to oh, warn my friends. They always have a guy there. They always have a chainsaw. Use a group of them. And then you have to walk through them. And I'm trying not to cry. And I'm like, be cool, be cool, keep it together. And then it's like, and they'll like come to your feet. And I just fucking take off. And I'm like apologizing. I'm not like the type of person to like push somebody out of the way unless there's a chainsaw. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry. As I'm screaming and crying and trying to say sorry through sobs because I'm trying to be polite and not an asshole. It's, it's a very weird situation what happens to me when the chainsaw. All right, are it's deep, it goes deep. Oh, it goes deep, no, it's very embarrassing. When we go to Universal Horror Nights, I'm gonna definitely hang out by you. And it will be like, whenever the chainsaw guys are around, I am watching, that is gonna it's be so, so good. It's embarrassing. But it's I wish I could experience. control it. Yeah. Then, then, then watching a movie with an audience, right? Like being there with an actual physical thing. With yeah. the scare actors and the immersion. And they, they know you. They know who's who's scared. They can. I love it when they can sense it. Yes. And they figure it out right away. You're like, they're like, oh, this one. You're not going to like this. I'm coming <laughs> for you. Like, and, I try, and I know that. And I try to fake it so hard. I'm like, no. Look like you are so unaffected by this. Yeah. And then no, it no, like. No. The trick oh, is you look like you're really excited for them to come over. So if you see them and you're like, oh. <gasps> They won't come to you because they're not going to scare you because you look excited. That's Unless because... you're me and I flirt with every single one of them because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Chainsaws <laughs> only or all scare actors across the board? A good amount of scare actors. I'm pretty much, it's we fall in love. I think mask. it's the mask thing. Like, it's like some like, I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing for me. You know, like, I guess we're revealing the kinky thing. I, this is the kinks I, episode. I'm so proud to be a part I, of it. Me too. <laughs> Honestly, I Same. you're. that's partly why I invited you here, you know? Um <laughs> Uh, no, but like, I, I just always fall in love and I'm just like, oh, talk to me. And you're all big and tall. Usually like usually put big, big, tall people in the outfits. And I'm just like, devour me. Like, and what is their reaction at that point? When you're, when you're purring at them and rubbing up against their leg, like what do they do? I go, oh, cat, you were right. They usually, they usually respond quite well. They're usually pretty happy. I might've made a friend at the rate at our speakeasy the last time I was like, oh, like what's going on? Like he had like. I don't know, guts coming out of his mouth or something. And I was just like, ah, let's kiss. <laughs> You're like mask, big, tall, and bloody. <laughs> yeah. The dream. Here's my address. Yeah. I know. I honestly, like, just show up. Door is, on, oh, is open. It's ready. <laughs> <laughs> bad, horror, bad horror girl is inks. I know. And this is the thing is, like, you know, we, we, we do horror movie survival guide. And the whole point is to survive and be the final girl. And if we watch enough horror movies, we'll know how to survive. Mm -hmm. And yet. And yet. We're going to die. We're and yet. Die. <laughs> yeah. We know. Well, we know what thing. we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Know we the know rules before you is. break the rules. You know, you're aware of the rules and then you kind of, oh, I break these ones, but I'm very well aware of the rules. <laughs> you end up Randy. Like, it's like, okay, yeah. like, it's like, okay, you can, you can study all you want and it's you <laughs> not going to save you. Do you, can die. do you have a favorite final girl? <sighs> My favorite final girl of all time is Sydney Prescott. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of masked men that you could leave the door open for. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I snuck into that one. Um, I wasn't allowed to see it, but I was like, I gotta see this movie. I, I didn't sneak yeah. in as in like I like I wasn't like stealing it. I still bought a ticket, but my parents didn't know that's what I was going to. Right. I told my mom I was gonna go see Beverly Hills Ninja. I still never seen that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're good. <laughs> you made a right choice. I'm not I'm not missing anything on that. I don't need to like I feel like yeah, before I, I die, I got to cross that off my list. Finally watched on my deathbed. I'm like, bring me the Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> and then you double feature it with Scream. And then you oh my God. And then I'm like, oh, perfect death. Perfect but my friend's older brother uh, worked at the theater and he bought us our tickets. So I still nice. gave my money to the Scream box office. But that movie, I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, absolutely in love with Nev Campbell. So. That I mean, I mean, <laughs> Party of Five. Right. Party I started of watching Nev. Party of Five because Scream. I was like, oh my God, this girl's on a show I could watch weekly. And then I started watching Party of Five. Yeah. With her little squishy scrunchy nose that she does and her little <laughs> face. I'm like the freckles, all of it. All of yeah. it. I was done. I was done. And she's a great final girl. She's she's very, very strong. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see the last Scream. That's the one she's not in. Is that correct? The last um, one, that came out. yes, that is correct. And it's going to be in the next one, but though. she is going to be in the next one. Okay, come back. Yeah. They realize their mistake and they're like, Oh, yeah. So <laughs> well, many mistakes were made, but we won't go into that today. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we talk about something else? Please don't make me talk about mistakes that have been made. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no
Oh God. Oh God. Well, you know, sometimes when you have a franchise and you love it so much, um, anywho, um, you just gotta, you gotta let some things go. Um, so yeah. So tell us more, I guess we, I want to circle back a little bit more to Fangoria since that's partly why you're here. I mean, <laughs> hugely why you're here. Um, tell us, I guess, a little bit more about how you think Fangoria has changed over the years or what it's like to be a part of the digital portion and how that, how that, I don't know how you interact with the, the online versus the print and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like two separate entities, but that work in tandem, you know, yeah. we've got the website and we've also got the magazine, but just because something is in the magazine doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about it on the website, but we just kind of try to cover it in a slightly different way. Or maybe there's like an interview that you had in the magazine and it's like the magazine can only give so many pages to that, but there's so much more great stuff that happened in that interview. So I'll be like, hi guys, I'll take it please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So a lot of that, and then also, you know, like the video component and things is stuff that we've built up, but it's just been so wild to be a, a part of this and kind of coming in when it's like, the website was originally sort of just like a supplement to the magazine. And now it's kind of like its, it's own, own kind of entity. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of, it's been really fun to kind of like be on board for all of that. And I'm just excited. And I'm like, Yay, getting to pay writers. That's that's fun. That's always like my main goal. And like it's so scary because every fucking day I'm like seeing, you know, friends and colleagues that are like, oh, here's another place that we can't write for anymore. And I'm just like, God, like, so I'm just like try to not think about that kind of too much and just kind of eyes on the prize. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna, we got, you know, we got readers and we got people that want to read your stuff. So we're paying writers, and that's just all I could ask for. Yeah, that's literally the dream. And then people in turn came, come and ask you for things like I uh, yelled at the screen when I saw Queer for Fear, the history of queer horror and saw so many of my delightful friends on there and your sweet little face. Um, <laughs> how did you get involved with that? And tell us more, I guess, about um, about that series and all that goodness. It's just one of those weird things where someone will hit me up and be like, hey, are you interested at all in doing this? And I'm just like, what? like I'm interested is like the understatement of the year and it just mm -hmm. baffles me that you are asking me to come and be a part of this so that was just crazy and it was one of those things where I'm like I feel almost underqualified to come and talk about this because I already knew who they had like taking part in this and I was like yes I will come and add whatever I can but also I was just like fucking in awe of like the roster of people that I already knew were on board for this thing and it turned out so fucking cool and seeing it as like a completed project I was just so proud to even be like the smallest part of that because obviously it's something that is very personal and near and dear to my heart so getting to even just be like like even if you guys would have just let me pop in to say a sentence I would have been like oh my god I can't believe I got to be a part of that so it was just really yeah. really cool <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> that, that was an honor like genuinely that was an honor to be asked to participate in any way with that but I mean, we talk about the horror community being amazing. You talk about the queer horror community, and then it gets even like a higher yeah. circle, even more <laughs> yeah. amazing. Next right? level, next yes. level. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I know we commiserated about lesbian vampires with you <laughs> on the red carpet um, at Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Um, do you have a favorite lesbian vampire movie? Um, I would love to know about that. Yes, yeah. one of our, one of our or favorite, any recommendations? <laughs> our favorite sub sub genres. Yes. <laughs> sub sub genre. Well, you know what? I feel like. Any lady vampire to me is a lesbian vampire in general, just generally speaking, because I'm like, picture a lady vampire, okay? Now picture her saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not into girls. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Like, no. it doesn't compute. Right. Like, it just wouldn't. Like, That's I'm not hungry. a line that we throw out. I'm <laughs> yeah. hungry. Exactly. You smell good. I'm hungry. <laughs> No, because we when um we we do a round every year of lesbian vampire movies. This is our third round this year, and we have not yet even began to scrape the bottom of the barrel. There is such a prolific it's a plethora. It's a cornucopia. It is. Yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> um, it does, but um, and you have been a part of the Chainsaw Awards, so we were mm -hmm. uh, honored to be a part of it last year. Uh, and you also worked in the 2022 and talk about how that felt to be like interviewing on the red carpet for an awards ceremony. That was just, that was like full blown geek mode. And that's all like, I was just there and I'm just like, I'm just fucking geeking out because I had like all these amazing people coming through. And I'm like, I'm just, it's literally my job today to just sit here and chat with you for like five minutes or whatever, as you're like coming in and I greet you. And I'm like, hi, I'm so excited that you're here. And I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. And that's basically what I did for like two whole days back to back. And it was fucking awesome. 
wow. Yeah, just I had the, so much the, fun talking with you guys, and I was like, I know we're not even going to be able to use like any of this because we're we're literally talking for fifteen minutes about lesbian vampire movies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we get excited. We get excited. You're like, no, oh, I was just, I was having we that was like we were, we're just unleashed, like the fucking <laughs> like all three of us. It's like we were like being you know hell. It's like okay, and release the hounds, and we just went whoosh, off the fucking rails, and we were like off to the races, and it was just there was no reeling it in, and I didn't want to reel it in, but I just also was like, this is not all going to be on the red carpet show, and this is just yeah, because I'm okay. just having fun talking to you guys now. No, same, and it was such an honor to be there, and all the 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 because when the second that we walked in, um, Mink Stoll was standing right there, Ooh. and I was like, yeah, like yeah. lost my mind. And speaking it was of pink flamingos, and one of the most powerful on screen presences of our lifetime, like holy Oof. goodness, I just yes. want her to. Tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Taught me. Taught me me. So me. But it was it was just crazy, right? And and it was also um we filmed on my actual birthday. So I got to be there and like that was my birthday present that year. And like being a part of that is such a dream. And like having you be a part of that too. And it's like it was so cool. <laughs> that was me for every single person that came in. Like I like that's how I started off basically. It was like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that like manic kind of like, oh, I'm so overstimulated and excited for like two days. And then I was like, okay, yeah. I need to sleep for, for a week after that. Yeah. So I'm tuckered out of all that you, excitement. <laughs> you had the cool hat and the, the blazer <laughs> and the, the whole fit was, yeah, it was, it was fitting. It's hard it to say fitting. what Thank you wear you. though for those kind of, you know, you got, you yeah. pulled the, Hold it off. Oh, thank you very much. I had a very specific idea of what I wanted. And okay. then I realized that it was going to be insanely expensive or not done in time. And then my amazing girlfriend found a way. I was like, this is what I have in mind. And again, with the crazy, like, you know, the fucking yeah. record thing. And I'm trying yeah. to explain this. And then she found a way to make it happen. I was like, but I only have this much time and I can't spend $10,000 on this thing. So how yeah. do I make this work? And she just did and just like knocked it out of the park. What was the what was the vision board? What did you what was the idea that you had for it? It was just these very very expensive nudie suits. It was this, uh, oh, this like nudie. cowboy designer, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, and they're insanely expensive. Like to get a, like an actual vintage nudie suit or to but have they're somebody so beautiful. Yeah, they're so it's so worth it. I will have one eventually. It just wasn't yes. gonna happen when I decided like a couple weeks before the Chainsaw Awards that no. that was the vision. <laughs> but you you did it and you nailed it, looked, it. It looked amazing. Thank I love you. your style. I love your little rockabilly kind of retro fun goodness style. It's very cute. And Thank shout out you to your so girlfriend for saving the day. Yeah. Seriously, right? Another thing to make me cry, you know? I'm like, it's a beautiful jacket. <laughs> My vision come to life. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I, I goals. Just goals all around. It was up to like 3 a.m. doing hand rhinestones on the thing, watching Resident <laughs> Evil. And I was like, love of my life. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It's like dream weaver in one of those <laughs> moments where you're just like, I've never seen you look more beautiful than helping me achieve this very, very niche dream. <laughs> like as she's hunched best. over, but somehow the breeze blows her hair in slow motion. Yes. <laughs> as the sweat drips off her brow, yeah. you know, like <laughs> <laughs> I, we just wrote fanfic, did we? Do we yeah, just write fanfic right now? Okay, great. Um, Here for I, it. I wanted to ask if there was, if you could look back now if, if it's your career, is there anything that you would do differently than where, than you had? No, I feel like it took me a long time to get here, but I would not change a single fucking thing because what, what if it was like a butterfly effect and I arrived here or I did, I didn't arrive here or I did something that like change the person that I am and I got here, but I'm like an asshole or something. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't want to change. I wouldn't want to change anything. It was not an easy road to get here and it was not a direct road by any means, but I wouldn't change a thing because I ended up exactly where I wanted to be. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> That's my freaking dream. Um, anything um, you want to plug? Plug, plug away. Plug away. Um, I, oh, I'll go back to uh, lesbian vampire movies. This is not like a deep cut at all, but I do like The Hunger. And yes. do you guys, I don't even know if there was a lesbian element in it, but Embrace of the Vampire with Alyssa Milano. Do you know this one? Ooh, oh, no, I don't know I that one. No? Okay. Well, it has Alyssa Milano in it. I think it was like a 90s straight to video kind of thing. I have right. the VHS of it. It's yeah. almost, it's like almost borderline Skinamax kind of a thing. 
Bring my your VHS over to our house. Yeah, like, okay. watch it. Bring it. Can you bring it over? <laughs> I have. A I have to order a new copy. <laughs> my mom promises she did not take my copy, but for some reason, it like vanished at some point when I before we'll I moved out it. of home when I was a teenager. It just went missing, and my mom was like, "I don't know," and I was like, oh, okay. "Okay, all right, all right, <laughs> all right, mom." Yeah, but I don't know what happened to it. But we will we will watch this together. We'll have a watch party. Okay, great. Okay, sounds good. I, uh, yeah. I'm one of my friends lit bought on one of Melissa Milano's old house. So I've been in the same bathtub that she's been in before. What? So okay. I'm gonna say that. New party idea. We go Just, to your friend's house. We sit in the Just, bathtub. We we watch and break the vampire. Wheel <laughs> in one of those like yes. elementary school TVs into yep. the bathroom. VHS oh, yes. in there. Done. That that sounds yeah. like the most immersive, beautiful mm -hmm. experience ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know she already talked a little bit about Romero, but yeah. anything else you want to say about how Romero has impacted your life or career or anything else? I know we got the most beautiful story of you meeting him. Um, any other words you want to say? And then, yeah. Thanks. I just think he was just a wonderful man. And I wish, God, okay, if I could change it, I wouldn't change anything about my career, but God, if I would have had the opportunity to just have like a lengthy, in-depth conversation with him aside from just like that three seconds of telling yeah. him like yeah like you 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 shaped my life in ways that you don't realize and I could never explain to you with words but just to be able to just sit because he just seems like such an interesting and sweet and genuine human I think yeah. that would have been wonderful to actually get to have like a real conversation just kind of like get into it a little bit because I mean, all of it, all like Dawn of the Dead as well, but Night, Night of the Living Dead was like the the pinnacle. Like that one, like took deep root in me and lasted through a lifetime. But also like yeah. Dawn of the Dead, I'm a fan of, and it just launched all of these things that like became my favorite movies wouldn't exist if he hadn't made his movies. And there's right. so many of us that do what we do that maybe wouldn't do what we do if we hadn't encountered his work at a certain point in our lives. So I just feel right. like the ripple effect of this mm -hmm. one man is just like beyond what any of us can even comprehend. And I just think like, God, what a fucking legacy. Like that is so incredible and so cool. Huge. Ag agreed. And and you may have not written a zombie musical if it was not for Romero. So oh, directly- Oh, 100% would not have. No, there's no way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. We love you, George Romero. We love you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> zombie. Um, any other things you want to plug? Um, obviously people need to go to Fangoria.com to find you and all your things, but anything else that they should be checking out on the interwebs, if you want to drop your handle, please go to Fangoria.com every single day, bookmark it, make it your homepage. That would be a wonderful Christmas birthday Hanukkah present to me. If you just made that your homepage every morning, if, if it's not your homepage, make it like your morning visit. Like you have your coffee in your Fangoria.com. That would be such a gift. That's my me. new newspaper now. Done. Yes. Yes, that would be incredible. Done. <laughs> and um, my social handles on Twitter, you can find me at Whore Girl Probs. And that's not, it's not short for Whore Girl Probably. It was like Whore Girl Problems didn't fit. So Whore Girl Probs. And then on Instagram, it's Angel, I-T-S-A-N-H-E-L, which I realized confused a lot of people. And I created, I did this to myself. I created a lot of confusion around my name. It's just pronounced Angel. Um, You're I am for the rest of our lives now. I, I am Mexican. My cousins do like like my cousins and best friends will just like you know like a nickname Angel pronounce it the Spanish way. But like my mom doesn't call me Angel; she just calls me Angel. So I confused a lot of people with that. So I, I apologize. It's cool <laughs> either way. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I answered to Angel. Like, honestly, or, yeah. you know, like I kind of like that as a horror thing. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I, I respect it. Um, just add a little double L action there. there. Tom Bien, you know. <laughs> Me gusta. Gracias. Oh, por nada. <laughs> it's such a delight to talk to you, Angel. Thank you so much. I, I mean, as we said, just geeking out with another uh, horror nerd is is the joy, is why we do it, right? This is the joy. Hell yeah. Of yes. Hand to heart. Hand to heart. Hand to heart. We love you. <laughs> Thank you for everything that you do. Like, honestly, like just things like this, I just... Anybody who champions and uses their platforms to kind of just like try and lift other people up, I think is the coolest fucking thing that you can do. So thank you for doing what you guys are doing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Let's all cry together in Alyssa Milano's old bathtub. Oh my God, yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, uh, thank you so much. We love you. Um, we, we will chat with you again, hopefully really soon. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. And, um, 
we also have some plugs. Um, oh, yeah. So I have a, we, you can check out our podcast. Horror we have Movie Horror Movie Survival Guide. Guide. Thank you so much, you know, um, and, and you can hear us. Um, and Julia take deep dives every week into different horror films. A lot of the ones we've discussed actually tonight, like The Hunger, we definitely have covered that. Yeah. Because yeah. David Bowie. Um, <laughs> and then once we watch Invasive of the Vampire, we can do an episode on that. And yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and then I have two other podcasts. I'm also on one called Jodorowsky, which is all about Alejandro Jodorowsky and his work. And also uh, the Losers Club, all about Stephen King. So if you want to hear me geek out even more about Stephen King, so and they go hard. That show, is like <laughs> I know Stephen listens to it because he will repost sometimes yes. too, which is very cool. But they don't have like a time limit. Like if they're covering a subject, they just go. And so an episode could be an hour, or it could be like three for, hours. Yes, like they three go. days. Yeah. Yes. Never enough. Never yes. enough. And we also uh, we love to talk to people online, so you can always reach out. And thank you to everyone, and of course uh, the George Romero, Romero Foundation. Foundation. That's who we're here, dedicated to restoring Romero's work and including seldom seen pieces from early in his career, like the amusement park, which is if you haven't seen it, I keep championing that one, and they have beautiful art for that now. And I actually saw it in my local video store, which was very exciting, um, and helping the next generation of young filmmakers. So. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Yes, we hope your days and nights are fantastical. <laughs> Fango forever. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just club exit. Yes. <laughs>